Hey there! Notice anything... different? And no, I'm not talking about my lovely new suntan. Yes, I am now in Fort Collins, Colorado, which is fantastic, but none of my stuff has gotten here yet, which is not. That's why I'm standing here perched on top of an IKEA crate, talking into a camera perched on top of an IKEA chair, hoping it doesn't get too much cloudier in the next 10 minutes. Actually, looks like there's a thunderstorm coming in, which is just... But I mean, it's a totally acceptable time for a cycling blogger to have his life in complete disarray. I mean, there's nothing going on now, right? Tour de... Tour de France? Is that a new... Fortunately, I have t-shirt donors like JBV Coaching, who can tolerate my itinerant lifestyle and somewhat improvised circumstances. They're a cyclocross-focused and internet-savvy group who'd like to remind you that July is the perfect time to start thinking about cross. They'll be holding CX camps in Cincinnati and Boulder this August, just like they've been doing for the past five years. There's a link to their website with more information in the video description. Now, what was I going to talk about again? Ah, yeah, the Tour de, Tour de France thing. No shortage of drama surrounding this year's race. First you had Cavendish crashing himself out on day one. Then today on stage six you had Tolansky trying to excuse himself from a sprint in a way almost absolutely guaranteed to ensure disaster. But hey, that latter incident did get us John Vodders telling NBC after the race that the rules are very clear regarding sprinting. I mean, first of all, the letter of the law is pretty roundly ignored in terms of what cyclists can do during a race. You could look at the sidewalk stuff from earlier this season or watch this video that some guy made on YouTube about group sprinting. Man, that video's been up for like four years. I wonder what that guy's doing now. Secondly, look, I appreciate the effort to get behind your rider like that, JV, but we've both read the UCI rulebook. The only thing they do worse than clear is transparent. Well, and maybe crisis communications after failing in each of the previous two items. Speaking of Froome, the reigning champ is now out of the tour for the first time since Bernard Hinault abandoned in 1980. Better blame the cobbles, or the pace caused by the cobbles, or the nervousness related to the cobbles, or the- Look, it's not like the ASO ambushed the Peloton's bunkhouse on Wednesday morning and made them choose between a cobbled stage or an awful waffle. The tour route announcement was made nine months ago, and the details were probably leaked to the important people well before that. Anyone who didn't want to ride cobbles could simply not do the tour this year. I mean, I know it would be terrible if people got the impression that the tour were just one event in a months-long season or something. <laughs> What's next? People thinking women can race bicycles? The Giro Rosa is heading towards its finale this weekend, and it's had a very strange parkour so far. Everything from classics like circuit races to burly urban crits. This is probably due to the financial realities of running the race. They kind of have to go where the municipalities who give them money say they should go. But from what I can gather from Cycling News reliable daily updates and special features at Podium Cafe, Velo Focus, and Cycling Tips, it's actually been active, interesting racing. I mean, yes, Mariana Vos and Rabo Liv have dominated, taking six stages and currently sitting 1-2 on GC. But a lot of that lead has come from old-fashioned heads-up racing. For example, reigning champion Mara Abbott of United Healthcare has lost time twice just by being too far down in the field during group sprints. Granted, she's the best climber in the world on her day, and it's more than fair to say she's got a chance of making up her three-minute deficit over the hilltop finishes in the next two days. But with just slightly better pack positioning and split anticipation, that's one less minute she'd have to make up. It's a bummer for her, but it's important to recognize that there are skills to stage racing beyond weight-to-mass ratio and fine-tuned aerodynamics. The Armstrong Tours may be fading memories. Well, I mean, for the people who actually watch cycling, for the rest of the U.S., July is still Lance Armstrong Memorial Clickbait Month. But they've left us with this impression that the tour is all about clinical dissection of two not-that-interesting disciplines. And to be sure, a lot of the Tour de France still is. But compare Wednesday's Mudfest to the malaise brought on by today's 230km strip of tarmac, keeping in mind that this is a sport designed to draw eyeballs, which would you rather watch? Of course, for that criteria to be relevant, there's got to be someone who knows how to show you the event, but that's a topic for another time. I'm Cosmo Catalano, and that was The Week in Bike.